Hello, good evening. Good to see you all again. I'm Sang Seo Lim, periodontist, private practitioner. I welcome everyone to the Dentium Live Surgery Show today. I am really happy to join this live surgery as a moderator. On behalf of Dentium Company, I would like to say thanks, thank you. I appreciate everyone. Today, Dr. Zhang was invited the same as before. He is showing to us minimal invasive surgery with maxillary sinus elevation. These procedures will be introduced with the Dentium's bite implant system. I hope this live surgery helping you in your implant practice. Thank you. Okay, let's take a look at the today's case. Today's uh, surgery, uh, the topic is bilateral maxillary sinus elevation and simultaneous, uh, simultaneously implantation. As you can see, uh, this is panoramic view of patient. As you can see, right side of maxillary sinus of patient have a big sinus cavities, including sinus septum, and uh, uh, the small volume of residual ridge, uh, remnant of the uh, host bone, and the left side of a patient have uh, enough the remnant of the bone from the sinus floor and residual ridge compared to right side. So today, Dr. Zhang is trying to lateral approach on right side of sinus cavity and crestal approach and the minimal implant installation on left side of sinus cavities of patient with a crestal approach. Uh, this patient have a no medical problem, so uh, can be minimally invasive surgery uh, received. About the protein areas, CT, Convim CT view was uh, is, uh, as you can see, looks like here, uh, very narrow ridge, uh, residu residual ridge, as you can see. So, uh, number 14 area need more some bone grafting. But today, Dr. Zhang showing to us about the minimal invasive surgery. So, uh, minimum size of implant fixture installation with uh, simple bone grafting or not. About 16 area. What about this area? Uh, I think uh, this area need a lateral approach for a sinus elevation uh, due to the uh, remnant of the bone is a smaller bone volume. So it is not enough uh, for the implantation, initial fixation. So simultaneously sinus elevation by uh, lateral approach and implantation. Uh, should be approached the simultaneously. And about the 24 area, what do you think about this area? Uh, this area is uh, better than right side of the patient. So 24 premolar area introduced by bright tissue level implant with a minimalism, minimal invasive surgery concept. A tissue level implant and just a small uh, bone volume, uh, volume up concept, or uh, maybe the skip the bone grafting. Also, uh, we can expect. About 26 area, uh, maxillary sinus also involved area. So I think uh, these areas need some of uh, sinus elevation, like a crestal approach, uh, sinus lifting, with the implantation. So uh, today, Dr. Zhang is showing to us about crystal approach of uh, left side of patient sinus cavities and right side of uh, sinus cavities with a lateral approach. So we can see both of sinus maxillary sinus by lateral maxillary sinus elevation with a different uh, procedure. One is a crystal, another one is lateral. It, it is intraoral view, so uh, the number 13, the canine areas, already uh, treated by, uh, root canal treated, 
and uh, covered by a crown. So prosthesis uh, uh, reconstruction already. About the number 14 have some constriction with the horizontal uh, rich wrist, rich width, but it is overcoming by a minimal invasive surgery concept, a simple implantation with a small bone volume grafting. About uh, this one is actually introduced by introduced by uh, the dentium brand new post and core. Actually, this one is made by uh, made of titanium uh, material and so uh, light and uh, resilient is very similar to tooth structure. So uh, this one is totally uh, actually. Uh, compensate of some of uh, these advantages of metal post. So metal post have some uh, occurrence about the tooth fracture after the uh, setting of root canal treatment uh, tooth. But this titanium post and core is easy application. So higher uh, retention gave us a very easy apply application and higher uh, the holding properties, and also uh, it is very simple to apply uh, method. So as you can see, already treated by endodontic treatment tools, uh, small preparation for this post, and uh, cement, uh, the resin cement with the post, and then and that's it. That gave us very convenient situation for make a uh, the crown re reconstruction, as you can see. So after this one, uh, number 14 uh, should be received about the implantation treatment, right? This one is uh, the procedure of root canal implant. This one is the naming, the titanium post named by root canal implant by Dentium Company, a bright system. So uh, about number 26 areas, uh, need a rarer approach, as I mentioned before. So, uh, lateral window and sinus membrane lifting and grafting and implantation uh, simultaneously. Okay. So, what about the number uh, 24, 26? Actually, these areas uh, the approached by approached with minimalism. So, Dr. Zhang is like to have a bright tissue level implantation, uh, bright implantation uh, about 3.09 millimeter of a 14 area and 2.57 millimeter number 24 area. And number 26 areas received of a number uh, 3.5 diameter and 9 millimeter. Uh, 7 millimeter is okay, but the Dr. Zhang is uh, trying to crystal approach a little bit more and changing the length of uh, 9 millimeter from the 7 millimeter. It depends on the situation of the patient bone qualities and quantities. So uh, we can see the crystal approach using this tissue level implant. How can the action, how can we uh, apply uh, this kind of tissue level implant of a bright system with the uh, uh, narrow reach actually narrow reach uh, situation, narrow reach area. Uh, so very interesting uh, theme today. So uh, please watching today of uh, Dr. Zhang's live surgery. Okay, uh, are you ready, uh, Dr. Zhang, yes. in surgery yes, room? Oh, okay, ready. so patient okay. are ready for the okay. yeah, surgery. So Dr. Zhang mm. is prepared the patient for the surgery and mm. ah, yeah. Mm. yeah starting everything. Yeah, he is starting to right side of patient area mm. first yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, Dr. Zhang is checking the intraoral situation of patient. So, as I mentioned before, number 14 areas have uh, some of constriction, restriction of reach, so have some depression. Can you see the de some of depression here? So, uh, it is another viewpoint of today's surgery. How can Dr. Zhang manage this number 14 area with the minimalism uh, treatment concept? In my concern, Dr. Zhang is trying to have a, a just a small incision and a simple implantation with a small grafting, maybe. Okay, so. The operation room. Yeah, the table is so simple as you as you as you can see. There's just only small one kit, uh, bright system, a bright system surgery kit is so uh, simple. Yeah, the few of drills you know, for all of situation can be covered. Yeah, can be covered by uh, just uh, the three four. The yeah, final drills can be covered mm. by four or five mm. final drills and small, yeah. uh, actually uh, the minimal situation, minimalism, the uh, concepts okay. achieved by this uh, bright implant yeah. system, yeah. as you know. Yeah. So okay. I will try it from the 16 to okay. after that, press the 40, uh, 14, and then after that, ch uh, move to the left side. Okay. And therefore, first time I will try to place the implant with the mm -hmm. sinus elevation. So, yeah. at first, I will try it after the elevation mm -hmm. and I will place the implant. Okay. So, to cons minimize the, for the incision mm -hmm. and then not to disturb the mm -hmm. peri implantium, so peri mm -hmm. uh, periodontal tissues around the natural tooth, around the one or two millimeters apart from mm. the natural tooth and a little bit partial incision after that and then with the vertical incision for the sinus elevations. Okay. Like this one. Yeah. 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 The popular after that, conjuration incision uh, was done. After that and yeah. a little bit more. Uh, looks like semi-lunar incision. Clear cut. Uh, checking the clear cut. Mm -hmm. Uh, using small round mm. curette okay, yeah. mm. to reflect the prep mm. and very and simple with a little bit more for the clinician. Okay. Uh, uh, he is making a little bit more vertical incision, uh, more prep reflection on this, uh, the surgery side. Okay. And try to do elevation efforts and after the drilling of the implant site. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, the remnant of the bone mm. okay. uh, from the sinus floor and Let's the visual leech around two or three millimeter. In this kind of case, the lateral approach is a good indication for lateral approach. So, yeah. He, you, he is using the black uh, big round bar connect with a straight uh, contra ang straight angle. So uh, this black one is so strong and the higher efficiency, the grind out efficiency. So uh, very e easier to grind out the lateral work. Just or just only two or three touches enough to remove lateral work of the sinus. Mm. And after that, uh, when we can see the sinus membrane uh, using the elephant foot, the separate sinus membrane from the lateral work, and then if you want to make, uh, make wider, make bigger lateral window, and after that, try again using this uh, black one, round bar, uh, sinus bar. Mm -hmm. 
And after that, uh, using this sinus curette uh, from the DASK kit. And finally, this uh, number five instrument, the nickname is long bow, is the final okay. instrument for the fully separate, full, fully separation of a sinus membrane from the window. Okay, and after that, uh, making a space and then the put the graft, put it in. Uh, this graft materials, osteon 3 collagen, and this graft materials are very beneficial, especially like this sinus elevation procedure, some, and also the GBR procedure. I love this kind of uh, graft material, the osteon 3 collagen. This collagen, uh, these graft materials, a uh, graft uh, particle is the same as Austin 3 and uh, the collagen binder holding this part particle. So uh, the easy to manipulate, very easy manipulation and holding properties are higher than the particulated bone. So just put it in the sinus cavities and uh, uh, pushing the distal and mesial part with a small round curette. Yeah. He used uh, three a small uh, size. A small size means the same diameter, but length is five millimeter. The bigger one, big one is 10 millimeter. So now he is using the five millimeter length, a small one. Okay. Uh, Sinus elevation was done, so mm -hmm. after that I will try the, the implant side drilling. Yeah. Yeah, so faster lateral windows and the sinus mm. uh, okay. membrane separation and elevation. So uh, some of uh, the some of attendee maybe skip the very important procedure of these a grind out procedure and the membrane separation procedure. So uh, if you uh, skip this procedure, you can see the recording uh, this uh, uh, life surgery view in the Dentium World website. Okay, and after that, uh, making a hole for the implantation. Yeah, guide the drill with uh, uh, blue ring, yeah, and then checking the point, the the direction, yeah, and uh, checking the pass and opposite dentition. Yeah. So I think you have very uh, a good position for number sixteen. Okay, so. Uh, these areas need uh, two implantation actually, number 16 and number 17. But unfortunately, uh, the patient asking, uh, the Dr. Zhang, have decided only one implantation for this patient. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, these areas yeah, uh, could be uh, placed with the bone level implant of bright system, cause of uh, so. the submerged, yes, for submerging the implant fixture. So mm -hmm. uh, he have decided the diameter 5.0, and the length uh, will be a nine millimeter. So ordinary uh, drilling sequence always I uh, recommendation strongly rec recommended you. The underside drilling is better than the regular uh, drilling uh, procedure. So if you want to have a 5.0 diameter, 4.5, or in some case 4.0, drilling is enough for uh, 5.0. It means uh, smaller uh, drilling to the expected implant diameter means gave us a higher insertion of uh, uh, this implantation placed uh, area, okay. right? So, yeah, already done of this number 16 area. So, Dr. Zhang is trying to pin for 
the fixation of plaque instead of suture. So this uh, new method is very interesting, actually. So uh, some of patient, uh, some of uh, surgeon uh, using suture for the plaque uh, fixation, uh, conventional style. Actually, it is like uh, text-like, the, the ordinary style for uh, suture. But uh, Dr. Zhang is trying uh, using the pin. Uh, this pin is a specific design by uh, Dentium. Actually, have uh, have okay. some uh, head. And they, without and any particle instrument, yeah. and uh, particle sutures, and uh, with the pressure, will to control the bleedings. Okay, so and the plug adaptations. Yeah, uh, everything is very well done. Yeah, very well done. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, very nice. And uh, after they move to the fourteen. Yeah, number fourteen area. Also, fourteen is very thin the low bone, so. Mm -hmm. I will try the little bit palatal instrument for the labial but argumentation with the soft tissue mm -hmm. and also two vertical instrument, very small instrument. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this vertical incision, mm. the popular uh, preservation incision actually uh, from one or two millimeter uh, from neighbor tools. Cause of uh, conserved uh, popular okay, so the flap reflection using this uh, periodontal curette. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it is very impressive uh, using this pin for uh, fixation of the flap. actually only two pin is enough to a fixation of flat around the number 16 area. So very simple and easy. Mm. So Alveolar uh, bone is very thin. Yeah. yeah so thin. As you see. Yeah, mm. narrow. As you can see, mm. have some mm. depression around mm. this. Uh, yeah. And also drilling, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he is uh, starting with the drill, the Lindemann with uh, a blue ring. Uh, this blue ring means a final laceration diameter, so uh, we can measure the final laceration during the drill. So uh, this blue ring helping us the ideal position. 2.5 uh, 3.5 okay so 3.09 millimeters yeah. tissue levels yeah. 3.5 mm diameter and uh, 9 mm uh, uh, 3.0 okay 3.0 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, due, due yeah. to uh, yeah. narrow reach uh, he have decided 3.0 diameter tissue level implant mm -hmm. right very narrow but good enough for the premolars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, this tissue level implant fixture is designed a little bit different uh, from uh, the bone level implant. Uh, the, this tissue level implant gave us a higher. The, uh, with this on the palate and the. Insertion hooks. Labials. Okay. Yeah, inside the marrow, very good positioned, mm -hmm. but it's uh, very thin in the each side, so mm -hmm. I'll do a little bit argument, contour argumentation with the osteum yeah. collagen. Yeah, uh, it is uh, authentic, actually authentic concept of Dr. Zhang. Uh, when we have a narrow reach, it looks like here, uh, trying the implantation with a smaller diameter, uh, like uh, using bright uh, tissue level implant. So uh, this implant fixture is surrounded by host bone, even though a small, uh, sorry, the narrow dime, narrow uh, remnant of the ridge, like a four or five millimeter, doesn't matter. But that after that, the bone grafting for the ridge augmentation. 
actually uh, this augmentation procedure is a little bit different uh, from the GBR procedure. GBR procedures uh, always expected 100 new one formation after this procedure, but this contra augmentation concept a little bit different. It doesn't need uh, call it doesn't need um, a barrier membrane. So uh, some part of uh, bone graftings uh, transforming to new bone formation, but another part of uh, bone graftings. Uh, couldn't transform a new bone formation just intermingled with the tissue and holding the shape, only the holding the shape. So it, uh, this concept uh, called by counter argumentation, right? So uh, doesn't matter. Cause of always already uh, implant fixture surface surrounded by host bone, and doesn't matter even though these uh, bone graftings a fully integrated of a new bone formation like this. Okay, so this counter uh, yeah, augmentation concept is very useful and simple and uh, peaceful for the surgery. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, bone grafting and no membrane. If you want to have a 100 new bone formation after bone grafting, you have to use uh, barrier membrane. Barrier membrane is necessary part for new bone formation when you have a GBR procedure. But counter augmentation, a little bit different concept compared to GBR procedure. So as you can see, uh, just implantation, bone grafting, and no membrane uh, applied. It means uh, just holding the bone, just holding the volume. Uh, doesn't matter uh, this uh, grafting material is transforming a new one or not. The either one gave us uh, counter uh, augmentation, right? So uh, that's it. And uh, just the simple two sutures already done. And I uh, have uh, book of, uh, tissue volumes, as you can see, yeah, mm. increased, right? So the underneath this flap uh, placed already uh, of uh, bone graft materials and the soft tissues looks like here the basically okay. apically positioned flap concept right so yeah. so also additional pin is applied on this part so all is done already done of uh, this right side of uh, patient surgery Number 14 of this level of bright implant system, and number 16, uh, bone level of bright implant system. So uh, during the surgery, uh, when you use, uh, if you choose bright system, uh, you can do a bone level implantation or tissue level implant implantation. Uh, both of them are easy, and uh, both of them are achieved by just only one surgical kit, right? And the same protocol of uh, the osteotomy site, a drilling protocol. Uh, this is actually, yeah, it is uh, one of uh, great advantages of this implant system, right? So, so what about the tissue level implant? Actually, this one is stronger than the bone level implant has the same diameter, right? So uh, tissue level implant can be applied a uh, little bit smaller diameter compared to tissue, uh, bone level implant when you have a, a, a narrowed ridge site. But it means, uh, for example, 3.5 tissue level the same as stronger to 4.0 tissue level, a uh, bone level, right? So uh, even though the one size is smaller, tissue level implant, the same as uh, strong, strong as same, uh, strong, strong as same as uh, the bone level implant. Uh, how can it, uh, how can it uh, can be happen? Uh, cause of uh, design. Uh, right, the top portion is totally different design, as you know, compared to tissue level and bone level. So, 
uh, this teacher level is uh, very uh, advantages approaches. Right and side, we have, uh, we have done a very uh, minimal invasive uh, incisions, but on the left side, this. I will do normal incisions. Okay, ah, uh, this area is yes, with a little bit due to some mm. palatal position to incisions. Mm -hmm. The little posterior bit wider. Uh, posterior maxillary areas always received by a collateral inclined incision. It means, uh, collateral inclined incision means uh, from the middle of the crest, two millimeter par from the ridge crest, two millimeter palatally far from the ridge crest. Right? It means a easy to manipulate parallel uh, flap. Advantages and uh, amenities. Arrow is very um, narrow, shallow. Yeah. The posture reach and is so uh, mm. so due to a partial dentary. So he is going to have too much uh, narrow. Yeah, too yeah. much narrow area. So uh, he is going to have a, a minimal minimalism surgery, minimalism concept mm -hmm. surgery. So how can he achieve uh, these areas a successful surgery by the using a smaller diameter, uh, bright implant system? Know. So yeah, it is very interesting situation. So extremely narrow area. So when you have a initial drilling point, sometimes we can use smaller high speed diamond bar or a small round bar and look like this fissure bar doesn't matter. I make an indentation first. Okay, yeah. uh, avoiding the slippery of uh, osteotomy drill or Rindeman drill. So the proper position first, uh, using this high-speed uh, feature bar uh, is very useful. Okay, so yeah, uh, if you wanna use, if you wanna use this is rich spreader. Uh, mm -hmm. This one is a rich spreader kit. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, which is spreader uh, with a mallet. The actually rich split and rich spreading is totally different concept actually. Right? So rich split means uh, the separate each other. Right? Little bit separate each other uh, for making a room for uh, wider diameter implant yeah, insertion. Because? So uh, this concept yeah. is spreading. It means expanding the radial bone uh, plate using uh, some of different kinds of device and drill. Uh, this one is which is spread the drill. This drill uh, doesn't have any uh, blade. It's just only rotational movement and the uh, insertion mm. and reverse, okay. and insertion and reverse. Yeah. Uh, during this uh, motion, uh, labial bone is expanding the labial a little bit more and more, so we can uh, have a, a more room for uh, implant installation, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a leech plate, mm -hmm. first uh, uh, you have to consider the rich with us. The actually uh, four millimeter uh, from the four millimeter, uh, you can try to reach a split uh, procedure. Under the four millimeter, uh, during the leech split procedure, maybe uh, the some of uh, the plate of labial bone plate uh, can be break. So it is not indicated okay. under four millimeter, right? So. Um, Uh, checking the ridge, ridge width uh, the above the 4 millimeter, the bigger than 4 millimeter, 
maybe four to six millimeter is the best indication for rich split. Ah. And when you have a rich split, you have to own, you have to make a vertical uh, channel. But uh, today's surgery, Dr. Jung is trying to reach spreading uh, instead of rich split. Cause of this ridge is so narrow, ah. under the four millimeter. So uh, it is uh, uh, somewhat dangerous if you choose the leech split procedure. Maybe uh, the radial bone plate uh, broken out. So Dr. Zhang uh, trying to leech spreading. So first, can you see, make a indentation using a high speed bar and have some uh, leech split uh, with the blade with the molleting make an uh, indentation, and then after that, let's spread a drill, right? The smaller to larger, the, ins, uh, the pro uh, proceeding and reverse, proceeding and reverse action, cause of, uh, doesn't have any blade of uh, this uh, spread drill. And after that, finally, final osteotomy uh, drills was used, right? And then, yeah. yeah, the already done the crystal approach. Uh, actually, skip like uh, malleting or steatome or some another the crystal devices. Uh, he is just trying to crystal approach using the final drill. It is very higher uh, technique for a crystal approach, so it is not recommendable for the beginner. They actually, uh, uh, they actually expert about this uh, sinus surgery, it doesn't matter. You can feel the sum of uh, feeling of uh, 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 tactile sense uh, when you approach the sinus membrane and the sinus floor. But uh, for the beginner, actually, a step-by-step -step procedure are necessary for the safer and the successful crest of approach. Right? That's it, that's it. So, the ordinary step was uh, just two millimeter yeah. under the field. If you have a six millimeter, the element of the bone, uh, you have proceed until the four millimeter. So two millimeter is remained from the sinus floor, and then uh, you can the, try the element of the two millimeter, the element of the bone, using the crystal devices, the various devices like uh, uh, hydraulic pressure or some osteotome, and some of another devices can be useful when you have a crystal approach, when you have uh, this kind of situation. Finally, uh, he have uh, placed a tissue level implant yeah, with a higher insertion torque, uh, undersized drilling, and uh, already expanded uh, this osteotomy site. Even though the narrow reach, we got the higher initial stability with uh, this tissue level implant fixture. Okay, for the so implantation, I will some bone graft to mm -hmm. palatal bone grafting. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, sometimes we need a, a palatal bone grafting as well as uh, buccal bone grafting, right? Because of the uh, palatal areas also need some grafting, uh, bone grafting situation, right? So. Uh, when you have uh, this kind of uh, counter augmentation concept approach, always choose uh, osteon 3 collagen. Membrane the is very okay. useful. Okay, so, oh, uh, he uh, changing the, uh, he is changing the treatment concept using, now using osteon, uh, sorry, now he is using collagen membrane. Yeah. Yeah. 3.0의 구미리 implant. Yeah. The collagen membranes. If we if we can see collagen membrane uh, during the surgery, mm -hmm. it means surgeon want 
100% new bone formation around this bone grafting procedure area, right? So uh, we can see the membrane. It means GBR procedure. So a surgeon expect uh, total new bone formation. Uh, uh, Call is membrane size, uh, 1020. Mm -hmm. And the tissue level implant size, diameter 3.0, length 9 millimeter, already installed. So another one mm -hmm. is uh, just before installed, okay. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the already bone grafting on the parallel area. So, okay, yeah, uh, he makes some uh, small, oh, uh, he want to have uh, oh, engagement of uh, a fixture. Yeah, he is engaged, he is one to have an uh, engagement of the sign. Uh, collagen membrane to implant fixture. Okay, so VOCA augmentation using Austin 3 collagen here. Yeah. Tearing then, eh? mm. Mm. Okay, see you. <coughs> okay, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Membrane, one more. Mm -hmm. Okay, the collagen membrane applied on parallel area, and put the graft materials between between host bone and collagen membrane. Yeah, at this kind of situation, Austin 3 collagen, like uh, this kind of uh, graft material, is very uh, useful and easier to manipulate. And this one is bigger one, uh, bigger one collagen membrane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, bigger one collagen membrane is uh, fixed by uh, the membrane pin, and this membrane pin is very versatile. Uh, this uh, membrane can be used by fixation of the flap, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, the before right side of uh, sinus uh, surgery area, and this pin also used for fixation of sinus uh, fixation of uh, collagen membrane. Yeah. And, and uh, try to raise the steps. Yeah. Mm. I think the uh, with the augmentation, a little yeah. bit difficult to close up. So yeah. And the little bit periodontal releasing incisions yeah. with the periodontal curettes. Right. Oh periodontal releasing incision using this periodontal curette. It is new technique. Because some the ordinary technique uh, done by uh, blade. Uh, blunt blade is uh, useful, yeah. But uh, this time, uh, Dr. Zhang uh, showing the showing the this uh, periodontal curette for the periodontal releasing incision, right? So this periodontal releasing incision is a key. The how can we cut this periosteum on just underneath the overlying plaque? It is a key point. So, uh, Dr. Zhang uh, using this uh, per periosteal curette instead of the blade. But sometimes uh, the blade is dangerous, as you know, so cutting the periosteum, but sometimes cutting the overlying flap, so have some uh, pene mm. uh, penetration mm -hmm. of overlying flap, so mm -hmm. it is very difficult That's to manage uh, when you have a suture. So, uh, if you uh, choosing the blade for uh, releasing incision, you have to cautious, mm -hmm. right? Uh, always uh, the very 
uh, gentle uh, the cutting of uh, periosteum from the overlying flap. Mm -hmm. I recommend you uh, for this releasing incision, okay. like mm -hmm. this uh, peristal curette or some blunt instrument instead of the sharp uh, scalpel, right? A sharp scalpel uh, sometimes make a perforation of overlying flap, mm -hmm. so it is very, uh, it makes sometimes very difficult situation, uh, the blocking the blood supply, so uh, sometimes a uh, flap open or some a necrosis of uh, overlying flap. So always uh, the cautious usage is necessary for uh, using the scalpel. So instead of the scalpel, this kind of periodontal curate is very useful and good the instrumentation procedure. So we have to learn, we have to learn every time uh, from this kind of live surgery Many surgeons have uh, a unique style, the know-how, the plap manage or implantation, or GBL procedure and sinus mm -hmm. elevation. So we have to learn. Uh, we have to know. We need to know about this procedure uh, for a better result of our mm -hmm. daily practice. Right? Mm. Yeah. Uh, he, uh, yeah, he is following the open flap concept uh, between number 24 and number 26. The flap is open, right? So, mm. so, mm. Now, as far as I know, this collagen membrane is so strong and uh, so uh, the friendly tendency uh, to the flap, to mm -hmm. the soft tissues, very friendly uh, tendencies. So uh, small exposure of sinus, the collagen membrane, but always uh, healing, uh, promote healing, healing of healing soft healing tissues. Healing right? So don't worry about it. The, like this, a small exposure of collagen membrane, it is not the critical part. So uh, this collagen membrane, this dentium collagen membrane, have a good higher properties of uh, tissue integration. So you know, the automatically uh, the, the soft tissue healing uh, will be happen uh, can be achieved until two weeks, maybe. So as far as I know, uh, it is not the critical part. So uh, the easy to cover by soft tissues cause of uh, these collagen membranes tendency, the friendly to the tissue, soft yeah. tissues, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you feel free uh, using this uh, GBL pin for uh, fixation of flap. Yes. Mm. Mm. Instead of suturing, uh, he used he used two uh, the GBL fixation pin, and after that, uh, he is trying mm. to suture the modified horizontal matrix suture, modified type uh, for the intimacy and prep closure. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so, yeah. the horizontal matrix sutures Another one more horizontal matrix sutures are uh, sutures at trying. Mm -hmm. 
on the poster part of uh, number 26. So uh, today, tonight, actually, Dr. Zhang is uh, showing to us about the very simple implantation with uh, GBR procedure uh, based on the minimalism concept. Uh, this one is PDRN. Yeah, PDRN it uh, like uh, uh, gross factor, very similar to gross factor, so promoting the healing and reduce the swelling. So uh, very uh, nice and versatile materials. So uh, now when you have a GBR big uh, GBR procedure or some uh, bigger uh, surgery. Uh, you can try using the PDRM. Okay, uh, pressure dressing. Uh, the almost done of today's surgery. Yeah. Very well done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, finished. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Zhang. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate Dr. Zhang uh, today's live surgery show. Okay. So, uh, yeah, after that, actually, uh, it is not a finishing line. Actually, uh, some of a small uh, bit is uh, remained about the bite impression trait technique. After that, can you see that the connect with the transfer the impression coping on the uh, left side of patient? It means uh, for the, the temporalization, right? So uh, after that, the bite trade technique uh, will be applied for the patient uh, temporalization. Yeah, it means uh, using the bite tray and take impression by uh, using uh, impression material. And we got the sum of impression of a uh, scan abutment, a uh, scan data. So with the GBR, so what do you think about the bite tray impression? Is uh, some days later for the pleb stabilizations. Yeah. Today say I will try to showing the how to do bite tray impression and the scanning, but with the GBRs and the yeah. flap stabilization is important. So, what yeah. do you think for me to bite tray impression some days later? I think so a bite tray impression today is uh, yeah, no more, yeah, no problem today actually, Doctor Zhang, because of you got uh, the already initial higher initial stability, so. Uh, even though the uh -huh. GBR procedure, but uh, already got the initial Do higher insertion talk, so uh, the bite uh, tray yes, registration. But, uh, but for the flap stabilization, so okay. during the impression, I'm a little bit mm -hmm. worried about the some, uh, uh -huh. yeah, movement of the uh, flap. So okay. So what do you think about the some after stitch out taking okay. a bite tray impression? Okay, uh, I see. Anyway, we'll uh, put on the video of the bite tray impression and the scanning. Okay. And the, uh, around the two is later on the clinicaldentium.com. Okay. Okay, I see, Dr. Yeah. Zhang. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh -huh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry, today so I will try to show you the bite tray impression and the scanning part. Usually with the GBRs and the plus stabilization yeah. oh, is important. Yeah, no so problem, Dr. Zhang. Yeah. 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 Let ah, me introduce so about yeah. this uh, bite impression mm. technique. That, yeah, it's okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Thank you for waiting. Uh, let's take a look at the post-op panoramic view. Uh, as you can see, right side of a sinus of patient, very well done. Uh, the sinus elevation due to using uh, the Austin 3 collagen, as you can see, very easy and enough uh, sinus membrane elevation can be achieved. So, uh, 5.0 diameter 
uh, bone level implant uh, placed, uh, it is enough connection and during the uh, load bearing area of this uh, posterior maxilla. What about the left side? Actually, left side of a patient, a crestal approach, sinus elevation, also very well achieved. Uh, it is also can be done by uh, using the Austin 3 collagen. So even though the crestal approach, uh, using this Austin 3 collagen, helping the dome shape elevation of a sinus membrane, it also is very well done. Okay, so let's move to uh, one question. Actually, this is a very uh, good question about um, today's surgery. Can you give any reason to choose the tissue level implant and not the bone level implant in this case? Actually, as you can see, right side, number 16 area, installed with uh, number uh, 16 area, 50 diameter, a bone level implant installed, right? So, uh, however, this narrow reach area, number 14, 20, 24, 26 areas uh, done by a tissue level implant of a bright implant system. Actually, a tissue level implant have uh, lots of beneficial compared to bone level implant, especially narrow diameter uh, fixture. Uh, what the what is big difference actually? Connection. Connection is import, important fact, important factor, uh, especially load bearing area like uh, posterior uh, mandible, posterior maxilla, number 26, 25. But anyway, internal connection is a unique connection system. The ordinary system of uh, bone level implant today available uh, the, uh, in our market and the practice. Internal connection with the wide diameter doesn't matter. No other problem, no any problem, right? But uh, however, narrow diameter, uh, something different, totally different story. Like a 3.0, 3.5 diameter internal connection. What do you think about it? The actually connection with abutment, actually uh, the top portion of implant fixtures were, it's, uh, the tightly thin, so it is sometimes uh, the going to the, the fracture, the broken tearing of implant fixture. It means disaster actually uh, for the doctor and also the patient. So in some case, we have to choose a tissue level implant instead of a bone level, especially uh, load bearing area like uh, Premolar, molar, especially molar area. Uh, when we have to choose narrow diameter, you have to choose tissue level instead of bone level, right? So the same diameter, 3.5. What do you think about it on the first molar? It is possible of uh, bone level implant? No, it is impossible. Actually, it is not recommended for first molar, 3.5. 4.0 diameter, right? But however, tissue level can be done, uh, can be uh, endured cause of, uh, especially this bright system, tissue level implant, actually unique style design, uh, built in screw abutment type. So uh, the stronger uh, the connection area than uh, the same diameter of uh, bone level. So it is the reason it is the why uh, today's implant fixture children or by Dr. Zhang, right? Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for watching today uh, live surgery and see you next time. Thank you, bye.